how to know when to stop pushing yourself. We all understand that if we want to achieve something, we have to know how to push ourselves. And that's certainly true. There's no substitute to deep, meaningful effort. That being said, it is just as important to know when to take a step back in order to rejuvenate our strength. That is, if we want to maintain the quality of our endeavors long term. So I'd like to talk about when taking our foot off the gas pedal may be actually a good idea, especially in the context of learning. So in order for all of this to make sense, we have to talk rhythms and more specifically, a particular category of biological rhythms known as Outradian, which is just a cool way of saying that a cycle like that lasts less than 24 hours. These rhythms were first observed by Professor Nathaniel Kleitman. He noticed that normally our brain and body take 90 to 120 minutes to go through all stages of sleep. However, later on he observed that even when we are awake, we keep following similar patterns. Kleitman ended up calling that rhythm the basic rest activity cycle, or BARC. I mean BRAC. He then stated that there are two main phases in that cycle. The first phase is characterized with feeling focused and alert, and in the second phase, you start feeling wary. Since Kleitman's first discoveries, there's been a lot of research on Altradian rhythms. And we know, for example, that nighttime and daytime cycles are governed by different mechanisms. We know that these cycles may span from 20 minutes up to six hours. There have been even discussions on whether or not we should be calling them rhythms or actually episodic events. Nevertheless, one of the things that remains quite consistent is that every 90 to 120 minutes, our brain and body naturally invite us to take a step back and replenish our strength for a good minimum of 20 minutes. Which brings us naturally to the next question, and that is, well, what to do, and equally important, what not to do in those 20 minutes. So here's what I found out. Every quality we're learning about is either cognitively or physically demanding, or both. This is why after that you need rest. And what I mean by rest is a very specific thing that I came across in research, and that is a quiet period of low stimulation. So this translated into something more practical, things like a body scan practice, meditation, or simply going out and gazing into the distance, letting your mind wander off, are all good solutions. And I'll make sure to include links as to how to do some of these things in the description. That said, wake for rest can be as simple as just going for a walk or having a meal. However, opposite to more common productivity advice, you might actually want to do those simple things without necessarily putting up a book or a podcast in the background or without putting on a show while chewing. And here's why this is important. What research shows is that during these periods of actual rest, our brain is not vacant. It consolidates the memory of what we just did, it creates connections, and it literally repeats hundreds of times that we just studied without us consciously taking part in that process. And if we present any other stimuli, and ironically called distractor tasks, we're indeed distracting our brain from doing its thing. And of course, different tasks may require different amounts of effort and focus. So some of them may be less demanding, allowing you to go for longer bouts without interruption. Others may necessitate that you take a longer break afterwards. Keeping that in mind, my invitation to you is to pay attention to yourself and know that taking a longer break every 90 minutes to two hours is not necessarily a sign of lack of dedication, but a healthy way to acknowledge and respect the needs of your brain and body. And it also demonstrates that you understand that learning is a long-term game and you know how to enjoy and play it. And that is all I have for you for this one. Thank you for watching, keep it bright, and I'll see you in the next one.